All right. Hello and welcome to This Week in Gwent, a weekly show in which we talk everything Gwent. And I am joined by Thea. Thea, how are you? I'm doing amazing, Bouja. How are you doing? I am great. It's great to have you. And uh, you're, you're far away once again. You're farther away than you normally are. I am. Normally it's South Africa, now it's North Carolina, America. Nice. Six hour time difference, but uh, <laughs> it's doable. Awesome stuff. Awesome stuff. I'm really happy to see you pretty much thriving and actually traveling the world and doing awesome stuff because as far as I know, soon you'll be moving on to uh, university, right? If I'm not mistaken. So studies yeah. will be will be the priority. So yeah, plus oh, yeah. you're writing a book, plus there's so much stuff and you're doing casting <laughs> and, and you're streaming and man, there's so much going on, so much to unpack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, my therapist can do that. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Awesome. So before we get to you, uh, we'll first start off by talking about what has happened in Gwent throughout this week. Uh, I wasn't also here last week because some of you might know we were moving. So uh, you can tell by the difference of, of what's behind me and probably a bigger echo. But we'll, we'll solve, the, solve those things hopefully soon. But anyway... Uh, it's been two weeks since we since we did the last twig, and there has been quite a lot happening. So, first of all, uh, on the 13th of May, we started our partnership with Million Pugs, which is an awesome company. Um, and if you're a US Gwen player, you can start earning in-game rewards alongside their everyday purchases. So you get pugs, and you can redeem those pugs in order in order to use them for things in Gwent. So yeah, they also contacted, contacted some of our content creators, including Theo, of course. How was, how was the, how was the thing with Million Pugs for you? Oh, it, uh, like I told you before this, I thought it was a scam at first, how <laughs> great it sounded. They told me you just download the app and any purchase you make uh, for now in the US, you get rewarded with in-game things like leader skins and powder and it just sounded too good to be true. And then I saw Spacey do it, Lionheart. They got yep. everyone involved. It was so cool. Um, I'm currently working with them and having a blast. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, this is this is one of our first uh, partnerships. There will be something else coming very, very soon, but I won't spoil it yet. Um, but get, get ready for more information starting next week. Okay, moving on, staying still in the uh, realm of Gwent. Uh, we will be doing maintenance on Wednesday the 25th. Um, this is something that is necessary. So there will be a short time frame, 10.30 a.m. to 3, uh, 3 p.m. CST, so our European time, where Gwent will be unavailable. And so no option to play the game at that time. Um, but yeah. Uh, hopefully you guys get to plan your time around it. And after this um, downtime, we will be back and everything will resume and work as it should so properly. All right, so that's that's the scheduled maintenance. We also published this week some information about Summoning Circle, which was allowing players to see units in their deck in order from top to bottom. Of course, uh, this was pointed by one of uh, the streamers, I think it was Spyro. But um, pretty much um, this is something that was intended by our designers. It just wasn't communicated properly. So sorry about that. Um, but yes, uh, th pretty much having this information allows you as a player to better make a decision on the choice of cards you want to summon and lower the risk by making drawing into selected uh, unit less likely. So it was pretty much a planned thing and we discussed it with the design team. And um, yeah, it wasn't a mistake. And we didn't make it a feature because uh, you, someone pointed it out as, as being improper. So no, don't say that. It's not true. <laughs> <laughs> so um, <clears throat> yeah, I know there's there's a lot of people talking about that. I know there's a lot of people talking about Arendite. Uh, when it comes to Arendite, I can tell you that we're already looking into it when it comes to possible changes coming with the next update. But yeah, don't tell anyone that I told you. So yeah, that's, 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 that's new, new news. Um, moving on, I think the big news, uh, first of all, we had, uh, on May 17th in 2011, uh, we had the Witcher 2 Assassins of Kings, uh, release and come out, which was awesome. And, uh, it's still one of my uh, favorite ones because it had Yorvet, yes. And as you know, I'm a huge Squadel fan. 
Um, and actually, GOG has a sale on the games, all the Witcher games. So if you go to the anniversary sale, you can check it out on GOG. And there is a link on the Witcher Twitter. So be sure to check that out. And <clears throat> a couple days later, we had seven years of Witcher 3, which is crazy because um, I remember joining the company and it's going to be seven years soon, which is quite incredible and crazy. So um, kudos to them. Um, and also with that uh, anniversary announcement, there was information that uh, the next gen version, which people are waiting for, of The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt is planned to release in the fourth quarter of 2022. So that is that is also something that people are waiting for. That is something that I'm excited for because I was actually thinking about replaying the base game once again. I only normally from time to time replay the, um, the expansions because it's shorter time to complete them. But I'm kind of thinking about replaying the whole thing. I don't know if that, I think that'll be, that'll be a good time to do it. Yes. Yeah. Agree totally. I'm doing the same. <laughs> yeah, you're doing the same? Good. Mm. Um, last piece of news. Um, we have the top 16 uh, qualifiers happening this weekend. And you, Thea, plus Lionheart, will be casting the uh, on Sunday the finals, which is super exciting. And that will be on Lionheart's channel, if I'm not mistaken. True? Yes, it will awesome. be. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, also great to have you once again on the casting scene because you guys together, you do amazing stuff. So I'm really happy to see that. Oh, thank you. We, we love doing it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Plus you guys are super good at it and the, the chemistry there is, is super good, which is, which is also important whenever you have a casting team. All right. Community news. Um, let's start with the Gwenfinity stuff. So uh, no flurs of this uh, week because uh, of the whole moving thing plus flake traveling. So we took a we took a week uh, off, and um, you you can catch last episode, which is about faction identity. But if not, um, if you want something fresh and new, you can check out So You Think You Know The Witcher. And uh, Thea, you were on this uh, this uh, season, let's say, because I call them seasons because they come out in a couple of episodes. Um, how was the experience for you? Because I always ask how everybody kind of felt during the whole thing. Well, I like the title because it's very... Uh... I'd say it's spot on. You you think you know The Witcher, <laughs> and you find out you don't know The Witcher. Um, but it was it was incredibly fun. Uh, it was great to work with 983 Media, who is setting it all up. They're always very professional. And Lionheart being the host was a, was a lot of fun yeah. to see as well. Yeah, I just I just didn't want to throw away my name. Um, I'm not. I don't. I don't know if I want to spoil anything, but I didn't know what Gwent was called in the books. Mm -hmm. I kn I knew it was played by dwarves. I didn't know, you know what, I'm going to spoil it. I didn't know it was called uh, the barrel game mm -hmm. or something like that. Mm -hmm. So I, I found out a lot of cool stuff. I, I recommend it to everybody who thinks they know The Witcher uh, to go watch it and see if they know the answers. Yeah. Plus there was, uh, I think in this episode, there was a tricky question about um, who was the voice actor for one of the characters. I think it was Triss or Shani. I don't remember. Oh dear, I did not make it, it that far if that's it was it was one of one of those and uh i was like totally poof, i was i totally didn't know what to what to what to answer to that one and I, that was the one i had the bid like the biggest problem with but it's mm -hmm. much easier to answer these questions where you're sitting nicely at home and mm -hmm. uh you see him um and you're like yeah yeah this is this is fairly easy i wouldn't have a problem with this one but then when you think about it when you're in the hot seat and you're being asked a question and, the, and, and you know, the time pretty much is, uh, is, is, is ticking. It's kind of like, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I should second guess what I, what I'm thinking. Right. Am I thinking, right. Was this the answer? Maybe not. Maybe let's think about it more or maybe let's actually use, you know, use, use one of the signs in order to, to get ourselves out of trouble. But yeah, um, awesome, awesome show. Uh, can't wait for for more episodes. And uh, yeah, plus this one was was stacked with Doug, um, plus uh, Vlad on it, which was really really cool. I didn't know Vlad knew The Witcher so well, to be honest. I didn't give him enough credit. I have to I have yeah. to give credit where credit is due. So yeah, now it's on tape, so uh, he can go back to this and say that I gave him credit. Good. Like I knew he was a Witcher nerd like me, but I didn't know. 
he was that good. All right. Um, moving on, two things from Reddit. Um, one is uh, some awesome wallpapers with Dryads. Um, so for the best faction, so check them out. There, I think there's a total of five uh, posted by Rikimaru Aldr. Um, so check that out. Plus, uh, Weisenberg um, made a cool Nifgard deck with soldiers. So check it out, check it out for sure if you want to play something different. Um, and then now everybody should be saying, no, Golden Necker, Aaron Dite, and all that stuff. But yeah. But they're not, because this chat is very nice and wholesome. All right. <clears throat> My voice is kind of breaking down. Thea, how are you doing? Um, overall, with all the traveling, with all the, you know, Gwent-related stuff and fitting streaming back into it, how are you enjoying this patch? Let's, 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 let's unravel some stuff. Yeah, well having a great time i i wish i could play more uh, the traveling made it difficult but uh, i got my second streaming setup here ready to go so i played a lot with sahil yesterday it was really <laughs> fun to see how far i could push it uh i then found that most people have built anti sahil decks and that made it yeah. less fun um yeah i i, I personally think uh, yeah it's very interesting being able to play so many similar cards throughout different factions I also think it gives us, uh, even though the meta sort of evens out very quickly because people tend to follow the most popular decks and they all want to play it, I think there's actually way more potential currently to make new and different decks because of the neutrals. People just don't do it that often. Um, it's a lot of work to actually build a deck, but um, I, I'm quite enjoying the patch myself. Nice, good to hear. Yeah, I feel like there's this this echo chamber right now that uh, everything is Aaron Dite and Golden Necker, but I feel like there's more options in terms of like the things that you can play. Uh, interestingly enough, I saw yesterday a deck that caught my interest was like a hybrid of uh, a little bit of dwarves plus elves kind of uh, mixed into it. Mm -hmm. So I'm actually gonna try and, and play around with that. I think it was one of the streams that I was watching. So really, really excited to check that out. Um, when well coming back to like the early beginnings when did you discover gwent for the first time so i graduated high school in 2016 and i i was just taking a break from studies before i got into university i decided to buy the witcher 3 i uh, got hooked i <laughs> i was just in my room for two months all my friends were out partying i was playing the witcher nice and yeah, it was amazing. I don't regret it. I found myself uh, playing more Gwent in the game than the actual Witcher game. Okay. And I would just travel. Uh, and maybe it's the OCD in me, but I loved it. Uh, I would play against NPCs and it was the first card game I've ever played. So it really hooked me. And then on my PlayStation 4, I got this notification, I think also 2016-ish, mm -hmm. maybe 2017, where it said Gwent as a standalone game is available. And yeah. I was like, whoa, that cool so i played it on my playstation 4 up until it came on pc and i was just hooked from that so i kept playing going 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 throughout university and then eventually i started streaming because i i told myself i can't play games <laughs> as much as i do without a reason yeah. to do it so streaming would be productive in my view uh, so i started streaming Gwent, and that became my main game and yeah, I haven't, haven't stopped since. So nice. it's, it's been a wild ride. Incredible. So 2016. So you are here since the early beginnings. I remember when we were setting up that notification uh, on the PlayStation to to players that, you know, had uh, Witcher 3 that, you know, Gwent is coming as a standalone. And we were wondering, you know, how many people will actually, you know, uh, see it and actually migrate uh, to it because like like you said it's it's kind of a different game right it's 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 first of all it's our first multiplayer title that we ever did as a company plus um it's you know it's played totally different than the normal Gwent so maybe in the beginning when it came out it was more similar to what was in The Witcher 3 but still it had to be balanced and made into a competitive card game which was which was the biggest challenge and I think still is the challenge still till this day right Mm. so that was sure. that was how you how you joined that's incredible um when you played the witcher 3 um was there anything from the story or any quest that really like caught your attention or caught your eye or something that you kind of go back and kind of reminisce uh when it comes to the witcher 3 well no, first i have to admit when i wasn't connected to the twitch world yet so i mm -hmm. wasn't watching twitch 
didn't know it existed. I didn't know the DLCs okay. was were a thing. I never played them, and that's why I'm replaying the entirety of The Witcher so I can play those because I hear they're <laughs> excellent. Yes. Uh, I regret that so much. But um, the actual Witcher game, uh, I'd still say one of my favorite quests is the one where uh, Kiera sends you out to the the rat-infested uh, mm-hmm. big mansion, and you find the uh, the girl who who it's it's like Sleeping Beauty. She, she basically uh, took a little potion that made it seem like she died and they thought she died and the rats ate her alive. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that, I love that quest. It, and, that's and then, a, of course, that's a the secondary pan lady. Quest. Yeah, that's a secondary yes. quest. It's a tower full of mice. Um, yeah, that's that's such a, such a good one. And I'm happy that you mentioned it because I feel like not everybody did that one. Uh, but if you if you kind of explore more the the, the Kira uh, romance option, you pretty much you get to this quest. And um, yeah, um, and you need to do do it before you get to the Isle of Mist. So it's like one of those quests that needs to be done earlier. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So that was a really really cool one. And there was a second one that I caught you off uh, that you were talking about. Oh. The pan lady. Ah, the pan lady. Uh, yes, yes. Your hair pan. Yeah, that was <laughs> a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, I think that's one of the quests that people always remember. Plus, I think Bloody Baron is one of those that kind of stays in oh, people's mind. Oh, for sure. Yeah, because that's it's... almost an obvious one. That's mm-hmm. why I didn't talk about it. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. Yeah. Also, for me, the first time when 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 you meet Siri in person as Geralt is is just so for those that haven't played, it's not a spoiler. Just when when you actually meet her. When you finish with Gwent and all that stuff, um, yeah, it's one of those moments where the music and the atmosphere and everything is so like it makes you want to cry. So it's really, 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 really cool. Okay, um, so you had no prior like CCG experience, no card games in your life before that. None. It's <laughs> ironic how this sort of made me a CCG streamer now. Mm-hmm. I love playing other card games and comparing them to Gwent and it's, I feel like it's almost better. I think a lot of players get burned, uh, burned out if they force themselves to play the same game all yeah. day, every day, yeah. which is obvious. But it, for me, when I play other little new card games or popular ones off stream a lot, uh, I just, I see the little things I appreciate in Gwent and I appreciate them even more. Like, uh, don't tell anybody this, but uh, <laughs> yeah, so Jimmy, Jimmy's played, uh, Mr. Beast played Hearthstone a lot mm-hmm. back yeah. in the day. So he was like, oh, I should play some Hearthstone. And I was like, uh, sh- uh, sure, I'll give it a go. Um, and the first thing that caught us off guard is I was in South Africa. He was in America. We couldn't play against each other because we were in different regions. What? It was region locked. Oh, yeah, it's true. Like, there are regions. You're right. Yeah, we. I thought, well, of course, we should be able to play. I mean, in Gwent, you can play anybody in the world. Yeah. You can challenge them. And this massive game, Hearthstone, you can't play against people if, if you're in Europe and they're in America. That was just such a deal breaker. And I just thought, wow, I don't know. I should appreciate something so small from Gwent until it was taken away from me. Yeah. And uh, of course, you also realize how free to play Gwent is when you start <laughs> playing a different game like Hearthstone. <laughs> My gosh, uh, yeah. that's like spending hundreds of dollars to just get it uh, into the professional scene. It's ridiculous. But yeah, um, no, I, I think Gwent's very special. Like I, I'll stick to Gwent till the very end. It's it's really, uh, it's difficult to put into words, but I mean, I wouldn't be streaming it all the time if it wasn't uh, a special game for me. Yeah, and it's kind of part of your like your origin story because it's something that you started your streaming with. Because before that, like you said, you you played Witcher three, and then after Witcher three, when Gwent was there, you were thinking about actually you know going into streaming. How difficult was that as like a first decision? Is like, should I be doing streaming? Do I really want to do it, or was it just like, oh, this is Twitch, this is awesome, I want to do it. Let's let's jump on it. Well, my first stream or two, I got panic attacks and I had to stop the stream because <laughs> uh, it's a it's an adjustment. People don't realize it's first there are six people watching and it's really like six people are watching yeah. you. And then I got a raid and I had a hundred people watching me. Now that's that's nothing to me, a uh, hundred people watching. But then it's you, you realize you're you're on a stage and a hundred yeah. people are watching your every move. You're not used to the camera on you. That was a lot for me. The mic. Um but uh, you get used to it after about a year, it's fine. And um, the the cool thing was I was first playing a few games on stream to test it out. 
when I played played Gwent, that's where the community suddenly came into the stream. Yeah. And I went from six player uh, viewers to 16 to 25, and people were so kind. And that's why I stuck uh, in the Gwent category. And that's how I sort of expanded into streaming Gwent, Gwent, Gwent. And still here to this day, it's one of the best communities I could find on Twitch. Yeah, I agree. The community here is very, very nice and wholesome. And yeah, with streaming is always kind of the problem. Like you first, the thing that you always have somewhere in the back of your head that there's a lot of people watching, even if there's not a lot that there are actually people watching, like you said, you kind of are on stage and it's very hard to um, get kind of familiar with it and kind of like, okay, this is, this is how it's supposed to be. This is easy. I can, I can push through this. But in the beginning, it is it is very stressful. I remember when we were doing our first like uh, streams, which were in the uh, company. So that was even more stressful for me because I started from, you know, from like a setup that we had in one of the conference rooms, and we did like one of the first streams. I actually rewatched it. Um, I think like a couple of weeks ago, and I was like, oh my god, this is embarrassing. And that's kind of where we where we started off. And it was it's it's the the first ones are very stressful, but once you kind of get the hang of it and you do a couple i feel like it's, it's it becomes natural and i agree with you that you know the the, the community aspect is the, is the best one because you get to see like the same people coming in you know every time you do a stream and you're, you're creating this own community not only around the game itself but around um yourself as a persona right so you're also building that mm, for sure yeah for me it was uh very odd because again i was cramped up in an apartment studying uh, so I was away from people and I was like I need again productivity for me was potential income it wasn't really a th especially if you start off streaming that's mm -hmm. not even a question yeah. uh, it was more like uh, being able to interact with other people I saw that as like the win so um, yeah it, it brought me completely out of my shell like a lot of people think well you start off as an extrovert and that's why you stream it's like I was not like this uh, three yeah. four years ago at all I was polar opposite and I mean streaming is one of the best things I think a person can do who isn't interacting with other people a lot because of work or because they don't really want to leave the house it's just so cool how technology has allowed us to do this as a as a job or a hobby or a yeah. pastime yeah it's it's amazing plus uh, a lot of things that people have been saying that kind of they, a lot of people picked up streaming because of the pandemic like they were pretty much forced to sit at home they could not mm. you know go and see their friends so they started streaming and they kind of started creating this community around them and this was kind of the aspect that kind of you know brought them this 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 let's say a little bit of sanity let's say um and, and an insane time where they you know have other people that they can they can kind of interact with and it's not that you know you're just sitting at home alone and thinking you know reading the news or watching television and seeing what's happening like it's it's much better just to fire up a stream and kind of have people come to your chat like appreciate you interact with you discuss some stuff discuss the game or whatever and 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 i think it's a fine time i even sometimes feel that like second the secondary thing is actually playing the game the, the more important yeah. thing is actually interacting with the people. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Uh, once you realize that, it's a complete mental switch. Like It's one thing playing Gwent offline, and it's another thing playing it online with people watching. It's, it's, I'm, I'm there for the community more than anything, and, and then comes Gwent. <laughs> but it, yeah. uh, that's why it's so difficult for me to stream other games where sometimes it's a new game, and like an RPG, you have to really concentrate on the story. And... Uh, that takes me away from the chat and reading uh, what yeah. the people in the community is saying, and I, I don't like that. It's I would rather interact with them while I'm playing something. Yeah, I I, I have the same thing. Like RPGs, I feel difficult to uh, to follow the story unless it's something like Elden Ring, when you don't you don't really need to follow the story because it's very complicated, <laughs> yeah. convoluted, and people like Vatividia will explain the whole story to you on YouTube. Uh, because it's 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 like it, it was like with the Dark Souls story, like it was hidden in some of the items and stuff like that. So for that game, it, it kind of makes sense because you're kind of focusing on gameplay. Although I feel that I am so focused whenever I'm playing that that it will be hard for me to actually stream such a such a mm. game. Yeah, for yeah, sure. yeah. But uh, coming back to what you kind of said about Gwent and also playing other CCGs, so you are pretty much now trying other CCGs and kind of seeing what's what's out there or um, or do you pretty much 
exclusively try to stick to 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 Gwen. But I feel like, to be honest, I I can kind of answer that from my perspective. I I I cannot play only Gwen. I try different card games in order to kind of see what they are doing in terms of mechanics or in terms of gameplay, and then comparing that to what we're doing with Gwent. Sure. Um. I mean, again, like I've seen this, I've been here from the beginning now, and I see when people either leave Gwent or they become overly frustrated with the game. And that's not casual players doing that. That's the best of the best or yeah. people who stream all day. And I mean, that's such a natural reaction to playing the same game all day, every day. I You will eventually find fault in something. Uh, it's just... I don't think games are always meant to be played all day. I think variety is so important. Or just stepping away from gaming entirely mm -hmm. for a day or two. Um, for me, it keeps me sane. I mean, it's like, yeah. again, you play Gwent enough. So, like, especially before a cast, uh, you know, we, we practice with the yep. decks. And later, you know exactly what's the win condition. You know what the deck's archetypes are. You know exactly how it works. And you, you know it. And then you sort of want to play something else uh, instead of just playing that over and over and over again, um, which is perfectly healthy. And I think more people should do it. It yeah. would definitely make people more more chilled, uh, I think. Um, yeah, because I don't think you're meant to be playing the same game all day, every day, without some frustration occurring as a result of that. Yeah, I think it's it's like with everything, it's like people who get burned out because of like a uh, heavy work schedule or they're doing the same repetitive task multiple times, yes. they yes. tend to get burned out. And and I think that's the same thing comes when it comes to streaming and when it comes to gaming or even just playing the same game. Like there are games that I play that, you know, I get fed up with and I need a break and then I might do something different. I might actually, I don't know, go for a bike ride, for example, I don't know, do something different and then kind of circle back and then uh, with a fresh mind, go back to it. Exactly. Okay. And um, mm -hmm. yes, sorry, I just wanted to say like, um, especially when, uh, when people are either complaining about going being too much like chess or going to being too RNG heavy, I, I purposely, if that ever happens to me, I go and I play the exact opposite game, like uh, chess the other yeah. day was like, got it out of my system. Chess is good. It's not as great as going. I go, <laughs> I want RNG. I go to Hearthstone, Hearthstone, very random, your wins feel completely, you know, uh, it feels like you just won the lottery, that's it, and then come back to Gwent and you appreciate what you have again. And it's, you can't, you can't have it too much either way or else it turns into chess or it turns into Hearthstone and Gwent isn't either one of those, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, we don't we don't want to be too too RNG heavy, but also like if it, once everything is balanced, it becomes the boost you know the boost and damage game pretty much. So exactly, which also is something that players don't want. And I feel like through Gwent's overall development and whatever happened after you know midwinter and stuff like that, we kind of been on both boats. We've been on the full RNG boat. We've been on the boat where everything is uh, after homecoming was very very flat uh, the everybody called the boost and damage game and pretty much you know it's 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 now kind of come to to its own life and i feel like the new cards abilities especially the ones that we've been recently adding and also the cards that we've been tweaking uh from the ones that exist in the game but kind of need more love kind of shows you that development and card abilities have kind of grown a lot since 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 the early days sure yeah when did you decide or even think about casting the game? Because that's that's very that's very interesting that you you pursued that because it started with just playing the game, streaming, and then casting. So casting is is quite you know it's a it's a big step. Um, not only from the fact that you know you need to know the ins and outs of the games, the interactions, what plays when, what works, what triggers what, and all that stuff. Plus, uh, unfortunately, as, as, as a female caster, you probably also get uh, more shit, to be honest, uh, from, from the community. So how, how and when did you make the decision that you want to do uh, casting for Gwent? Well, um, first, I just started watching the cast when I got onto Twitch, because again, that's when I discovered this whole online world. I normally just played Gwent alone on my PC, so I wasn't in, in touch with that. And it was really cool seeing, uh, it was Flake, it was Burja, Shin, and we had Jagras and Panda. So seeing Jagras cast, to me, I think this is very similar to Celia as well. Mm -hmm. uh, she said something similar. It's like, 
oh, there's, I can, I can do this. Um, yeah. that's, that's cool. Uh, there's a girl doing this and uh, that's nice. And, um, so at first I just really liked Gwent. So I was trying to get good at Gwent and I'd play it a lot. And eventually you sort of do that enough where you sort of think, you know, your stuff and Lionheart was starting to cast some of the games. And I thought, well, this is a cool opportunity to get to know Gwent even better because yeah. you can, you literally analyze the pro scene and you see what they are doing. So I, I jumped on a cast with him and we sort of started doing it together. And it just got so much more fun to see other people play Gwent than playing it myself because it's cool seeing how you can just optimize a deck in ways you wouldn't think possible. Yeah. Like one of the, the most fun games we've casted was when Payable started discarding cards yeah. from his hand. I think it was it, I think it was a Kaltulus sort of matchup. I I think, but it was so so cool seeing that for the first time in person. And then that became the thing. It was more casting with Lionheart, uh, interacting with the pro players. So much fun. So we we do, did uh, all the community events. Mm -hmm. uh, it was really cool being in touch with them and that's when um yeah, CDPR reached out uh, to yeah. us like uh December, like a year, a year back or something, and asked whether we we're interested in maybe casting a, a open event. Perhaps we were like, of course we're interested. <laughs> that sounds sounds amazing. And uh, yeah, that's where I I got my first shot. And um, yeah, it it just stuck from there. It, it was such a cool experience. Yeah, I agree. I was really happy also that you mentioned like Jagiris. She was like the one of the first ones, and I. I remember I was uh, petitioning very hard, like within the company, that we actually have her on the on the on the casting team, and mm. I think that that kind of opened up the possibility for other female streamers just to and, and casters just to actually say, okay, this this is something that I can also do, and this is something that I could get into. So, really happy that 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 pretty much worked the way that it was supposed to, because I feel like this is what we're seeing now. Like it used to be, this is something that we also discussed in one of the uh flirza episodes where we had you mm. plus uh silly and, and others uh to talk about like female representation uh, in card games i feel like this has kind of boosted the 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 you know the the norm let's say of what it is now to be um in this community and also in the on the casting scene on the professional scene so really happy to see it grow sure. yeah yeah for sure like uh, the amount of new female players is suddenly great as like, I don't know if I'm imagining it or because I'm taking notice all of a sudden, but when when I started playing Gwent, there was Ash, uh, Seely, Jagoras. Yeah. I don't recall any other, well, English-speaking females, really. And yeah. now we've got a whole bunch of them, uh, like, rising up and just love to see making Gwent deck guides, like, you know, not afraid of interacting and making Gwent content. Absolutely love to see it. Yeah. Likewise, likewise, and and I'm happy that it's going this way and it's growing this way because that's that's how it's supposed to be, and uh, I think that yeah, it's something that you also mentioned before is like if you look at our community, we're very welcoming as the Gwent community. So especially the people who come to streams and who are on Discords and kind of interact, like these are people that you know they they value your work and you as a person. So they kind of build this you know nice and welcoming community, which is which is important. Sure. Absolutely. All right. Uh, you're also doing a lot of stuff like behind the scenes in your in your personal life. Like uh, I know you're soon gonna be flying into um, studies, university. Plus, you're writing a book. It's like how many things? Publishing the book. Oh, publishing the book, even finally. Yeah. So yeah. how many? How many? How many things are going on? There's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I have a, I have a horrible habit of making every hobby i have productive so <laughs> first that's it was, good i was yeah well, i was playing gwent and now i'm casting gwent so productive uh i i loved writing and reading it's so like well uh we're gonna write a book <laughs> i started it actually also in about 20 2015 actually i started this book and it's problematic because the heart and knows the story, but the brain doesn't know how to write a book yet, and it's not that easy. Uh, so I I had to learn through it. Mm -hmm. Um, and it, like as I grew older, every year I rewrite the book, rewrite the book until I now reached. I went from seventeen years old to twenty four, and now I'm I'm very happy with how it looks. So nice. got it edited. We're self publishing it now mm -hmm. in, in about two months. Um, 
should probably do some self promotion awkwardly. It's uh, yeah. called The Marked Children, nice. science fiction, young adults. Yeah, I'm extremely excited to see how that goes. And um, other than that, yes, the studies are uh, going to study um, neuroscience in uh, Scotland in that September. That is so interesting. Neuroscience is amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's it's totally new for me because yeah. I went from law to psychology to the next step, which is biology in the brain. Um, so, yeah, I was just so excited when I got in there because it's one of the best universities to do that with. They yeah. get your own lab, you get you get the rats to work on and all of Perfect. that stuff. Um, yeah, so I'm super excited. It's going to be a year in Scotland and yeah, it's going to be an adventure, I'd say. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I pretty much geek out in my free time on, um, there's this uh, neuroscientist, Andrew Kuberman. Um, okay. And he has his own podcast and uh, just just pretty much talks about, because he's a, uh, he's a researcher at Stanford University and he talks mm. about it in a way that is um, understandable to us normal, let's say, humans who are not into neurobiology or neuroscience or stuff like that. So he pretty much tells you everything. And it's about like simple things like, you know, how to change your habits or, you know, pretty much explaining you how your brain works in certain stuff. Like last episode was about, you know, how to get rid of aggression and stuff like that. So mm. it's very interesting to um, to to listen. And he also comes from it from different uh, like walks. It's sometimes about sports. Sometimes it's not about sports, but it's just like, you know, every day, sometimes well-being and stuff like that. So totally recommend if you haven't checked it out um andrew huberman he's awesome <laughs> i will definitely check him out don't i must have seen one of his podcasts or something already for sure the name sounds so familiar yeah he's he is quite known because he's i think he's one of the, the the ones that is actually out there preaching science to to the people so mm. it's, it's and it's kind of his 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 personal goal in order to do it and i think he he was on another podcast called the Ritual Podcast, which I like always uh, listen to. So from from that one, I learned about him, and from from that, I kind of started, you know, checking out his stuff. So highly recommend. All right, yeah, I I love these things. It's it's great knowing exactly how we're built, uh, what you can change and what you can't yeah. change. It's like for me, like psychology was first. Okay, uh, how are we all special and different? And now this is telling you exactly how we are very much the same and it, it's just so refreshing if you find out you know uh, we all struggle with similar things and then you find out well that's very much ingrained in your yeah. in your brain it's quite literally how we're programmed you know um like uh, also like finding out like one out of five people deal with either depression or anxiety and it's like well yeah we're not built for the current world like we're not built to be talking in front of a hundred people at yeah. a time and it's quite natural for that uh, fight or flight instinct to kick in. And once you know that's normal, it's like, it's refreshing. It's yeah. good to know. It's not, you're not abnormal for having certain feelings or functioning in a certain manner. And I just love that. So I, I want to dig a little bit deeper there, uh, hopefully this year. Yeah. Plus you can kind of distance yourself from it because you understand kind of the nuts and bolts that kind of go into it. So it's mm. much, much easier to, to understand this because sometimes like, you know, we might be feeling a lot of stuff, but we don't understand like where it's coming from, but then you kind of have it, you know, um, explained to you in a scientific matter and you're like, okay, this, this actually makes sense. Yes, exactly. That's like labeling a problem is, is one of the best things you can do. Cause that's when you can break it down into yeah. smaller pieces, yeah. sort it out. Yeah, absolutely love it. Nice. Nice. And you kind of been, been approaching life in, in this kind of way, like whatever, whatever is happening, pretty much, uh, break it down and also see, like you mentioned, like seeing possibilities, how you can turn something into a, a thing, like with the, with the book writing, with the streaming is like, you know, taking it from, uh, let's say a passion or a hobby and actually turning it into a thing. I think that also plus being consistent with it and actually sticking to it is, is, is incredible because I think, we sometimes can have like a lot of ideas and, and things that we want to do, but it's very hard to like follow through on all of them. Since some, some of us, I know for myself, like sometimes I just have too many things that are like ideas and it's very hard to actually, you know, turn them into real things. Mm, for sure. I mean, that still happens, believe me. <laughs> <laughs> I have like 10 things I'm neglecting right now. And hey, if two or three of them can work out, uh, yeah. I'm happy. Yeah. 
Yeah, awesome. And c- congrats on the publishing. Like, I hope it's, it's going to be published soon. Um, I need a copy for sure, because I because I want to oh, read it. Definitely. And it's and it's been quite a long project since you said that, you know, it was something that you started thinking about when you were 17, right? Yeah, I uh, started writing it then. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, it just it went from 100 pages to 200 to 300 and rewrote, rewrote. Um, yeah. yeah, I finally showed it to an editor. Nice. The editor likes it. I'm happy. Nice. That's so, good. Yeah, no, I'm very excited. But like I said, uh, we'll see. I, I'm not going to put too much pressure on the process. Uh, I, I've never done this before. I don't know how it works. But um, yeah, it should be out in like one or two months. And that that's is, awesome. We'll see how that goes. Awesome. Uh, when it comes to other things in the future, like what do you see yourself do- doing in the near future? Like taking into account that you have the studies, you have the book um what 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 happens to to streaming here gwent and all that stuff like what are what are your plans moving forward i think it would be very healthy to keep streaming part of uh part of the routine Mm -hmm. maybe not every day all day if let's say if if life happens but um i would very much like to continue doing this it's very fun Uh, i think it's it's a it's a nice creative outlet as well um Hey, if if the book somehow does good, I would love to do another one. Uh, but first, I I need that positive feedback because you're yeah. your own biggest critic. Um, yeah. Uh, so I I will do the masters, and if the masters in neuroscience not going necessarily, <laughs> um, <laughs> if if that goes well and I find I, I I really like it, then I might very well do a doctorate uh, in neuroscience. Oh, if, okay. If if it grabs my fancy, because a doctorate is obviously a lot of time, many yeah. years. Uh, you sort of need to know what you're doing by then. Do you want to start a family? Do you want to live in a specific country? Um, but yeah, the goal is actually to really um, delve into that academic field. It's uh, I, I've never seen myself doing a normal job, uh, but I really like <laughs> uh, obtaining more knowledge. And I would love to make my mark in the, in the field of academics and... Um, yeah, see if I can make some worthwhile discoveries while I'm at it. But it's way too soon. Uh, first, we'll see if I'm cut out for uh, neuroscience altogether. Yeah, I think I think you will. Since you like to get to the bottom of things, I think then it is something that is that, that you're going to excel with. And I think you have this perseverance uh, when it comes to actually getting things done. And uh, with 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 the hard work, I think it's 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 going to be easily easily done. And yeah, I know it's 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 going to be quite difficult studies because all medical studies pretty much are you know it's a, it's a big challenge but i mean looking at your trajectory and also you coming you know straight from south africa and now to scotland and stuff like that it looks like you know you've you've put in the work and the passion for it so so kudos for you for, to actually you know seeing it through and doing it thank you mm-hmm. uh let's hope it's still uphill from here and <laughs> well it always goes like this you know yeah <laughs> But um, yeah, so far it's it's going right now. It's going very well. So um, yeah, very hopeful. Yeah, hopefully everything will will turn out nice and everything will be good. Okay, um, final round of of, of easy questions. Uh, circling back to Gwent, favorite Gwent card. Uh, Visigota of Corvo. Oh, okay, okay. Love it. A favorite what art. Was my first deck. <laughs> favorite art. Uh, let's see. Oh gosh, Self favorite eater. art. <laughs> <laughs> yes that's the one oh, Love that's it. what i thought that's what i thought he's, favorite buddy yeah he's one of those uh, favorites uh so um favorite deck that you kind of or favorite meta that you played in since you're here since the beginning you have to have a favorite mm-hmm. well that's why this got of corva yeah. uh, is my favorite it was the very first uh deck i built when i started streaming it was the charges one where you'd have corva behind a defender You'd have Priscilla, Shani, yeah. and Nathaniel. Uh, and you just, every time you play a card, that's a charge. And Dandelion boosts, boosts, boosts. Favorite deck of all time. Yeah. Got got far with that deck as well. Made it very popular. And then the uh, the dueling one as well in Northern Realms. Um, triple triple boom, I think I called it. Where <laughs> you'd give uh, you'd give Anzis a shield. Give him a shield again, Southkirk. And you'd use the... Um, the uh what's his name to refresh the um order ability of uh anzis give him another go i know the um, ability i know the art but i do. viraxis no 
No. Yes, Raxus. Raxus, okay. Yes, yeah. that was by far one of the best <laughs> metas. And you'd have to time the duels because you'd play mirror matches against Anzis with the shields. And yep. It was so cool figuring that out. So much fun. Nice, nice. Uh, current favorite deck. Oof, current favorite deck. I'm playing around a bit with Sahil, but I'm sure uh, it, it's actually, I, I'm enjoying Dwarves a lot. Uh, Same. Um, Really enjoying Dwarves. Uh, absolutely love the whole mechanic there. I threw Yerdon in the deck, and now it's it's going brilliantly too. all of a sudden. Yeah, yeah. it's it's perfect with Yerdon, especially for the mirror match. I mean, you're you're set. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. So I'd say it's still Dwarves. Dwarves is currently my favorite deck. Good, good, good choice. Um, favorite Witcher character. Oof. It's a bit obvious, but Suri, Suri, I quite like Suri. I, mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, as a girl, uh, I can see myself in her and like yeah. being mentored by a witcher. I absolutely love it. Yeah, she's awesome. 10 out of 10. All right, yes. cool. I think we'll, we'll, we'll wrap it up here unless there's anything you want to like um, pass on to the, to the Gwen community. Now, now is the time. Or if you want to tell people where they can follow you, also can plug it in here or anything else, feel free to do so. Uh, how how is little doggo uh doing uh, well he's good he's sleeping in the corner right now <laughs> oh, okay no please let sleeping dogs lie yes well i'm that's all i really cared about uh, as <laughs> wanting to know how he's doing <laughs> other than that i i'm good i'm all good it was, thank you so much for having me i had a, a lot of fun i was i was surprised because i was looking for inspiration and then i when i posted a tweet uh miss lady j said that uh thea i was like Wait, wasn't Thea on in one of the episodes? And I was like, wait, she was not. <laughs> and that's kind of that's kind of me in a nutshell. I, I sometimes think that I did more of these and I had more people on. And especially like whoever is part of the community that I get to interact normally and also interact during the, you know, the um, esports events. I kind of feel mm -hmm. like we're so close. We're like family. You've probably been on one of the episodes. Uh, so sorry about that. Mm -hmm. I didn't know you were not. No, so it's good. Please. It's good we fixed that. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Awesome. <laughs> All right, Thea. Thank you, Dan. Um, enjoy your time in the States. And yeah, everybody, thank you for watching. And we'll be back next week. Bye. Bye.